Hello, everyone. This is Eris Trivia, and welcome back to another episode of the Zhuge Liang Northern Expedition and Lore series as we continue with episode 4, titled Ma Su. Now, in our last episode, we detailed Zhuge Liang's initial success out west as the sudden arrival of the Shu Han forces shocked the majority of the commanderies in the Yong province into surrendering right away as their administrators fled east to safety. But not everything went according to plan as despite setting the campaign date for January, when provincial prefects are usually away for annual reporting and holiday, Guo Huai, the prefect of the Yong province, who was also an experienced general from his days serving as the interim general of the West after Xia Houyuan's death, decided to stay behind as Zhuge Liang's presence in Hanzhong the year prior alerted him to the possibility of an attack from the West. Yet with the limited garrison, Guo Huai could not single-handedly hold back the tide of Shu Han forces by himself, especially with the Tianshui commandery, which he was inspecting at the time, surrendering right away to Zhuge Liang. Now one of the key defections from this surrender would be Jiang Wei, who would eventually lead the Shu Han forces in over 10 northern expeditions following Zhuge Liang's death. But that is a story for another time. Essentially, Guo Huai knew that the only thing he could do at this time was to muster up as many troops as he can and then take up a defensive position to stall Zhuge Liang's advance towards the low mountain ranges, as the four mountain crossing there were the only routes that the Wei reinforcement could take to save the Yong province. Therefore, after gathering the local garrison, Guo Huai retreated to a fortification at Shangbang directly north of the Mount Qi castle, and directly south of Jieting, which was the crossroad where all four mountain crossings would eventually meet. Zhuge Liang, who has prepared long and hard for this northern expedition, was well aware of the mountain crossings on the low mountain ranges, and their importance as the only roadways that connected the main Wei forces in the Chang'an region to the west. But given the limitations of his army in terms of manpower and supply, Zhuge Liang also knew he could never be able to send enough troops to block all four mountain crossings. But at the same time, Zhuge Liang also knew that if the Wei reinforcements started to pour in from the east, the Shu Han expedition force would have no chance. This was especially troublesome as despite the surrender of the three Yong province commanderies, the expedition is actually proceeding slower than anticipated as a number of small but key Wei strongholds have bogged down the overall pace of the army. First was the outpost at Mount Qi Castle, which despite its small size, refused to yield as Zhuge Liang was eventually forced to leave behind a sizable force to lay siege to the mountain fortress. Then splitting his army in two, Zhuge Liang sent a western force to claim the Tianshui commandery and the Longxi commandery. But this army group hit a snag when Longxi refused to surrender, which forced Zhuge Liang to once again leave behind a sizable force to blockade Longxi. Then for the main force headed north towards the low mountain crossings, they bumped into the one man they were trying to avoid in Guo Huai at Shangbang. So Zhuge Liang decided to stay behind with the main force to lay siege to Shangbang, while a secondary force would be diverted north to plug up the crossroad at Jieting in order to buy time for Shangbang to be taken. The whole idea behind this plan was that while Zhuge Liang did not have enough time nor the manpower to block all four mountain crossings, by blocking the crossroad at Jieting, the Shu Han forces could then effectively stall the Wei reinforcement at this natural choke point, regardless of which mountain crossing they took. Then once Zhuge Liang's main forces finish up their siege of Mount Qi Castle and Shangbang, they could join in the fight and perhaps even trap the Wei reinforcement between Jieting and the mountain crossings to deal another heavy blow to the Kingdom of Wei. So the only question left is who should lead the secondary force at Jieting. And out of all of Zhuge Liang's officers present, the two natural choices were either Wei Yan or Wu Yi. 
Wei Yan was arguably the most capable and experienced Shu Han general still in his prime, as Zhao Yun was already over 60 by this time, and more importantly not present, as he had been tasked with leading the diversionary force against Hao Zhen. Wu Yi, who we had briefly mentioned before in our Taming of the Shu lore series, was the elder brother of Empress Dowager Wu, or Liu Bei's brother-in-law. Add on the fact that the Wu clan had long been an influential gentry clan within the Yi province, Wu Yi had tremendous support and influence within the Shu Han court and armies. However, just as the decision was being made between these two candidates, Ma Su raised his voice and volunteered himself for this job. Now Ma Su is a member of the Ma clan of the Jin province. His older brother, Ma Liang, had been a close personal friend of Zhuge Liang ever since Zhuge Liang's family fled to the Jin province. And much like Zhuge Liang, Ma Liang was a generational talent and had served as Guan Yu's advisor in the Jin province after Zhuge Liang departed for the Yi province. Then after Liu Bei became emperor, Ma Liang served briefly as the ambassador to Wu before the Battle of Yiling sent him to the Wu Ling commandery where he persuaded the Five Valley Chieftain, Sha Moke, to support the Shu Han cause. Unfortunately, due to Liu Bei's tragic defeat at Yiling, Ma Liang was trapped behind enemy lines, where he would ultimately die during the retreat attempt. His death was not only a big blow to Shu Han, but also a personal pain point for Zhuge Liang, who saw Ma Liang as if he was his own brother. So following Ma Liang's death, Zhuge Liang grew closer to Ma Su, who soon became Zhuge Liang's protege of sorts. Then during the southern campaign against the Nanman rebels, Ma Su started to prove himself as he was the one to provide the overall strategy of winning over the hearts of the Nanman tribes by repeatedly defeating them until they truly yielded. So when Ma Su volunteered for the post at Jieting, Zhuge Liang was elated as these opportunities were perfect for Ma Su to elevate his political and military career. At the same time, Zhuge Liang probably also didn't want to give Wei Yan and Wu Yi this post because elevating them would be akin to creating political enemies for himself. Wei Yan especially could become a problem since he was well known for his arrogance after his meteoric rise from Liu Bei's personal retinue to becoming the military commander of Han Zhong, when at that time everyone thought this was going to be Zhang Fei's job to lose. Wu Yi on the other hand could also become a problem as he was ready the brother to the Empress Dowager, so giving him the opportunity to earn military honors to add to his gentry influence within the Yi province was probably the last thing that Zhuge Liang wanted as Zhuge Liang at the end of the day was an outsider in the Yi province, as he mainly represented the Jin province clans that had migrated into the Yi province alongside Liu Bei. Therefore, Ma Su, who also saw Zhuge Liang as an older brother, would become the perfect candidate to groom, and thus the fateful decision was made for Ma Su to lead this secondary force at Jieting. Now, Zhuge Liang did have some reservations and concerns as he would not only detail the exact plan for the defense to Ma Su, but at the same time, Zhuge Liang also attached General Wang Ping as Ma Su's vanguard general, as he trusted Wang Ping's abilities. But all will be for naught as the Battle of Jieting will become the turning point for the first northern expedition, as we are going to be ending our episode here. Next time we'll come back to introduce the Wei Reinforcement Army and the overall Wei setup to counter the first northern expedition, as well as the Battle of Jieting itself. So hopefully you all enjoy this episode enough to hit that like button to help support the channel, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!